You don't have to go far off the Pacific coast to see orcas swimming in crystal clear waters or spot octopi swimming out of kelp forests. Canada's oceans are full of these incredible, and in many cases endangered, animals and habitats. We have the longest coastline in the world, as long as six trips around the Earth. The Canadian government has pledged to double the amount of protected ocean area by 2030. With this much biodiversity, choosing which ecosystems to protect is already no easy task. And yet, some scientists are arguing that we should protect the empty parts of the seafloor, because they say those barren, muddy seabeds might just be more important than you think. Just 10 years ago, less than 1% of Canada's marine area was protected. Today, that number is around 15%. But the federal government has pledged to double that, protecting 30% of our oceans by 2030. So how do they decide what to conserve? While these marine protected and conserved areas are primarily designed and designated to protect biodiversity, there's more and more interest in this network providing and trying to be designed to give us a number of other ecosystem services. Ecosystem services is a broad term, capturing everything our oceans and coastal regions do for us, from supporting fisheries to flood protection to recreation. But there's another lesser known role they play. And one that's getting more and more attention is potential to help climate mitigation by protecting habitats that store and bury carbon naturally through the functioning of, of the marine ecosystem. When most people hear carbon storage, they picture pristine forests with towering trees. But really, it's the oceans and the plants within them that store by far the most carbon. Lots of research has been done on seagrasses, salt marshes, mangrove swamps, kelp forests, but now more attention is being paid to the somewhat less scenic muddy seabeds. They're really good at storing and burying a large amount of carbon. And this study is basically bringing the evidence together of what we have in Canada to try and build the case for these uh, habitats to be given uh, more consideration. So how exactly does an empty seabed store carbon? It all starts with phytoplankton, microscopic plants found close to the surface of all oceans. These phytoplankton take in sunlight and carbon dioxide, using it to grow and storing it just like a tree does. But some also use carbon to produce hard limestone shells. When these phytoplankton die, many will sink to the bottom of the ocean, becoming part of the seafloor sediment. Many will also get eaten, but still end up on the seafloor in animals' poop. As long as the seafloor isn't disturbed, that carbon can stay locked away for thousands of years. And that's why researchers say protecting these areas could be important. Any designated area since 2019 bans heavily extractive industries. So that includes um, bottom contact uh, fishing, so trawling and dredging, and oil and gas extraction and, and, and mining and things like that. The primary purpose of marine protected areas is always to conserve biodiversity. Epstein isn't suggesting we change that, but he wants to expand our idea of what valuable biodiversity looks like particularly with these muddy habitats, is that they do contain their own unique and diverse, often um, biodiversity of burrowing animals that live within the sediment. They may be less um, of a easy sell compared to some of the more charismatic habitats like kelp forests um, or seagrass beds, but they are really vital and, and uh, can be quite biodiverse and interesting ecosystems. So although it might look like a muddy mess, it could actually be far more valuable. Darius Madavi, CBC News, Vancouver.